seemed a little precarious when I walked away. All right. Um, finding that comfortable place on your sitting bones, feel free to scooch any booty meat out of the way. So you can sit up tall and long. Then you can start feeling the shoulders stacking over the hips. The crown of the head reaches up as the sits bones press down. So you've got that kind of counter resistance giving you space through the spine. Hands can rest wherever is comfortable for you. Palms can face up or down, whatever works. Maybe you choose to close your eyes. Simply centering yourself and bringing yourself to the mat. Feeling free to set an intention to guide your practice. Perhaps that intention focuses on a sense of openness, maybe even working to go with the flow. I've been offering the intention of patience a lot during these online courses, uh, classes. Um, partially that patience with yourself as you experience a lot of time at home, working from home. Um, situation is very different. And sometimes we get shorter with ourselves than anyone else. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, Go ahead and exhale everything out. And inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Allowing your breath to find its pace to guide your practice. Maybe you choose to continue that equal parts breath. For me, I find it creates a calming sense for my body. Remembering that breath instigates movement and allows for balance. On your next inhale, arms reach high, palms meeting at the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, a gentle upright twist to your right. Left hand comes to the right knee. Maybe the fingers kick in behind you. The gaze goes over your right shoulder. Here you feel length in the spine on your inhales and perhaps depth of twist with your exhales. Your next inhale unwinds and exhale twists to your second side. Honoring difference, not forcing depth of twist. Just feeling some rotation. Your next inhale, unwind. Exhale, hands come to the mat, walking forward, however far is comfortable for you. 
You could drop elbows, but using leverage of the hands to press the hips down so you're not rocking or tipping forward over your shins, but you still feel your sit bones on the mat. Your next inhale curls you up, hands to heart center, swapping out the legs if you're sitting crisscross. Feeling free to use the hands. It's a fun game to see if you can swap them out without your hands, though. And I use fun loosely there. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, chips, getting a side stretch. Maybe the forearm or the hand find the mat or floor beside you. Left hip presses down. Feel free to take a circle with the arm if that feels good to the shoulder joint. One big circle in each direction. Inhale brings you center. Exhale tips you to your second side. And taking that arm circle, especially if you did on the first side, but also honoring any differences between one side or the other. Inhale brings you up. Exhale, takes that forward fold once more. The switch of the cross of the legs often changes. This stretch just a bit. Walking yourself back up. You can shimmy shake out the shoulders if you'd like. We're going to make our way to tabletop. Feel free to swing the legs around. Roll over your knees if you're feeling it. My knees are not feeling that today. And we will be in tabletop for a little bit of time. So if you did grab a blanket, now would be a good time to place it under your knees. If you didn't and now you've decided you want it, you could fold your, foot, your mat and make a little extra cushion. As we settle into our tabletop, knees are under our hips, hands are under the shoulders, tailbone is reaching behind you as the crown of the head reaches forward. Feeling stable and supported in your neutral spine. On your next inhale, you'll drop the belly and look to the ceiling for cow. Exhale, round to the spine, tucking to cat. Your inhale returns to cow. Sinking your breath with your movement. And then feeling free to move intuitively. Maybe you jump rope the spine. Maybe you S shape the body. Maybe you're hankering for some big circles and you shift your weight forward and around, passing through child's pose. Just letting your body have whatever movement it needs for about four more rounds of breath. Nice job. When you've hit that fourth round, no rush. You can return to that neutral, supported spine in tabletop. So we're going to stretch our left toes, pressing the ball of the foot into the mat behind us. Intensity of this is up to you. Maybe you push with the hands into the mat, getting a nice stretch of the entire back of the leg. Maybe you bounce through the toes a bit, getting a little bit more of a moving stretch versus a static stretch.
And then lifting those toes, bring that leg to a hover, foot flexes. Maybe you use the toes of the other foot to tuck to create a little bit more support and stability. And you take those toes across. Pressing into the ball of the foot, targeting the outer hip of the bit of the supporting knee. I'm feeling it a lot in my obliques on my left side. And bringing that leg back center and reaching it out to the side. Big toes. So all five toes, not just big toes, facing a little bit forward. We walk ourselves up to stand on our knee, not all the way. Setting up for a little bit of gate pose here. So your left hand reaches down somewhere on your leg. Just don't lean into your knee joint. As your right arm reaches up and over with the side bend. Inhale, stack the spine. Hands come back down to the tabletop for the hands. I think this may be the wrong arm. We'll find out real quick. Left arm reaches high and we thread it through. Oh, yeah, that's the right one. For a little bit of threaded needle with a leg variation. Doing it this way, you also get the benefit of a little bit of an inner side stretch of your kickstand foot. Your next inhale on curls, sliding the hand back to the shoulder. Left palm finds the floor. Left toes kick behind. Almost done with the side. Bending that left knee. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take your right hand up and around, and maybe it finds your foot. Maybe it waves at your toes. You know, either way. If you aren't grabbing to that foot, feel your heel pressing to the ceiling, and you'll still get that quad stretch a bit on the front of the leg. Releasing, hopefully not slingshotting. We settle the limbs to the mat, wiggling it out. Pressing the hips back, pausing for a couple breaths in child's pose. Noticing any slight difference from one side to the body here, to the other. making our way back to tabletop. As we set up for the second side, remembering that option to have the toes tucked, providing a little bit of extra support. This time, your right toes press behind, toes to the mat, and you choose your intensity level of stretching through the back of the leg. Maybe it bounces slightly, maybe you push really hard, maybe you're very gentle. Tapping into the back line of that leg. Then lifting the leg up and reaching it across. Pressing into the toes here, and saying hello to that left hip. Lifting that leg through center, this time, sort of like that karate kick, foot comes to the floor. We walk ourselves up. Right hand, my, I like to rest my hand on kind of the back of my thigh as I reach my left arm up and over. Inhale, 
inhale, bring to center. Hands come forward, and we reach our right arm high as we thread that needle through. I like to scoot my hand forward a little bit, my supporting hand. And unraveling. Right hand finds the mat. Right foot returns center. Right knee bends as if you're pressing your foot on the ceiling. And then maybe those left fingers connect with the foot or wave hello. Just testing the waters here, the front side, the hip flexor, the quad, and into the shoulders. Then releasing hands and knees to the mat wiggling it out and then as you're ready we'll make our way to down dog as you arrive there pedaling it out walking your dog wagging your tail as you feel your hips pressing high hands active on the mat really think about that l of your index and finger and thumb making sure you feel weight there so that you're not accidentally dumping into the wrist. Finding your movement in down dog for five, four, three, two, and one. Pausing in the outward stillness of your down dog. Shoulders away from the ears, belly button pulling towards the spine. Taking three rounds of breath in your down dog. Your next inhale lifts your heels. Bend through the knees as you look forward. Exhale, steps, pops, or walks you to the top of your mat. Pausing in your forward fold. Maybe you grab her elbow. Maybe you let the knees bend a lot or a little. Maybe you sway. And releasing your grip, hands come to the shins as you lift halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Bending deeply through the knees as you tuck the tailbone, stacking vertebrae by vertebrae to mountain pose. When you arrive there, you can step it out, shake it out. Remembering you can, of course, take water anytime that you need as we move through our postures. When you're ready, we'll meet in mountain. Feet are just about hip distance apart. Remembering hips are often not where we think they are. We often step way too wide, making our femurs at an angle. Feeling shoulders stacking over hips, over knees, and ankles. You got the rib cage closing, engaging through the core, allowing for that joint stack. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, swan dives to a forward fold. Inhale, lifts halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, steps the right toes back, coming to our high lunge, pausing briefly to set up our alignment. We've got our left knee stacked over our left ankle. Maybe your fingers begin to hover. And 
then maybe you swoop up to your full crescent. Listening to your shoulders here, maybe you need a wide V, letting the shoulders drop down farther away from the ears. Maybe hands come to heart center. Feeling strong and stable in that crescent lunge. As we take our left hand to our left hip, and we stretch up and over to the left with the right hand, opening through the psoas, the quad and hip flexor of the right leg. Inhale brings you back center. Exhale, bringing your right hand to the mat, a block or a towel, and taking a twist to the left. Left hand can reach high, it can come onto your hip. Feeling the left hip pulling back as the right hip pulls forward, helping you keep alignment and also find some stretch on that outer hip. Then framing that left foot, stepping it back to down dog. Inhale, lift your left toes high. Bending through the knee, maybe the hip opens. Then squaring the leg back off through three-legged dog. As your next exhale steps the foot through, same foot, spinning the back heel down this time as we make our way up to warrior one. Imagining your feet are on skis or railroad tracks, not trying to stand on that tight rope. This time, reaching the hands behind, maybe they clasp, maybe you grab for wrists or elbows. Keeping the bend in the front knee, chest opens to the ceiling. Hands slide down the thigh of the back leg. Shoulders pull down. Your next inhale stacks the spine. Exhale spills you forward. Purple warrior. Maybe those hands reach up toward the ceiling. Maybe you rest your chest on your quad. Or bring the shoulder on the inside. And the crown of the head reaches to the mat. Your next inhale peels you up, releasing your grip. As you open your hips to the long edge of the mat, you might shimmy your back foot back as we sink into warrior two. Shoulders and hips open to the long edge of your mat. Fingers reaching. Inhale, straighten through your front knee, arms reach high. Exhale, deepens into your bend. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bend. Last one reaches. And settles into the depth of bend in that front knee. As you tip it forward, extended side angle, elbow, to me, hand reaches to the ceiling, or bicep comes by the ear and palm reaches to the front of your mat. Option, of course, to hover your bottom arm. Tailbone is reaching down. No duck feathers. Inhale reaches you back up. Straightening through your front knee, as you exalt your triangle up and back. Passing through warrior two, as you windmill the hands coming up on the back toes, stepping it back, down dog. 
feeling free to pause here or child pose. Or maybe you choose to take a flow. We didn't break flows down earlier. So feeling free to come to your knees. And through cobra or up dog. Eventually, all pausing for a couple rounds of breath in child pose. Pausing and checking in. Maybe doing that check like we did at the beginning of class. Noticing how one side of the body feels in comparison to the other. Knowing that we've got two sides. Your next inhale brings you up to down dog. Inhale, lift through the heels, bend to the knees as you look forward. Exhale, brings you to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lifts. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands to heart. Once again, feel free to step it out, sway it out, you know, fix your clothes, whatever. And then as you're ready, we'll meet back in mountain pose. Inhale, arms reach high. Maybe you take a baby back bend this time. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lifts halfway. Exhale, plants the hand, steps the left toes back, pausing in that high lunge, feeling your alignment and stability starting. And then as you're ready, extending to your full crescent. Honoring the space your shoulders need. And you get comfy in your lunge, stable, supported. This time your right hand comes to your right hip. When we reach up and over, whew, this side is far more intense for me. I feel that all the way down that whole front side body. Inhale, brings you back up, stabilizing again. And then reaching your left hand down and twisting toward your right. Maybe shoulders stack, maybe hand stays on your hip today. But think about that knee pulling in and hip pulling back of the front leg. Framing that foot, stepping it back, down dog. Inhale, lifts your right toes high. Bending through your right knee as your hip opens. Squaring it back up, the three-legged dog. And your next exhale steps the foot through, helping it along if you like. Coming up, back heel spins down. Warrior one. Resisting the urge to grip your toes. Let them spread wide. Expanding your stability. Hands reach behind, grabbing at elbows or wrists or clasping at the hands. Put the weird thumb on top. Keeping the front knee bent, chest open to the ceiling.
Inhale, returns neutral. Exhale, spills forward. To your humble warrior, maybe you find support with the chest on the thigh. Maybe you dangle. Inhale, peels you up, releasing your grip. Then opening to the long edge of your mat, maybe you shimmy a foot back to create a little bit more distance between your feet. As we settle in, feeling the blade edge of the back foot press down. Inhale, arms reach, front knee straightens. Exhale, deepens to your bend. First three. And seven. Two. And one. Finding the depth of your warrior two, as you tip it forward, extended side angle. Feeling free to play with your options or keep the elbow on the knee. Maybe the arm reaches overhead. Personally, I like the arm stacked over my shoulder. Tailbone still reaching down. Inhale brings you up, warrior two. Straightening through the front knee as you flip the front palm up and back to exalt. Passing through your warrior as you windmill your hands coming up on the back toes, stepping it back to down dog. Yogi's choice here, finding a flow, pausing in down dog. Eventually we'll all meet in a child's pose. Grabbing water, checking in, perhaps noticing a sense of balance between one side and the other. Pausing wherever you are for about three more rounds of breath. And then beginning to make your way back to down dog. Inhale, lift the heels, bend to the knees as you look forward. Exhale, brings you to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands to heart. Bringing those feet together, if they're not already there. Setting up for a little bit of narrow chair here. Inhale, sinks the hips down and back. Arms can come forward, hands can hang out at heart center. As you pause here, maybe you sink a little bit deeper. Maybe your shoulders reach to the chair behind you a little bit more. And shifting your weight to your left foot, coming up on the toes of the right, slowly shifting our weight. Lifting the right knee and taking it across. Maybe you kickstand the toes, maybe your foot wraps all the way in eagle. Then you can swing your right elbow 
under your left. Two options, you can hug and grab at the shoulders, or maybe you wrap at the hand. Sinking the hips down, belly engages. And unwinding the arms, stepping the foot down, shake out that standing leg just a smidge. And then shift your weight back onto it. Right hand comes out to the side, thumb is back. Maybe your left hand is on your hip. Bending your right knee. If you would like to grab any prop to make it easier to reach your foot, feel free. Hand grabs on the inside of your foot or ankle. Maybe you stay right here. Hugging the knees together, kicking the foot into the hand, while also pulling the foot toward the, toward the glute. This is plenty active. If you'd like, you could start to kick the foot into the hand more and exult into your version of dancer. Maybe you're, you got a wall handy and you grab onto that wall. Maybe your hand reaches forward, holding where you are for four, three, two, and one. Releasing gently, shake out that foot again. Whew. And then return to that big toes together stance. Inhale, hips sit down and back, chair pose. I like my hands at heart center today, but feel free to keep your arms extended. Feeling that tailbone reaching down, belly engaged. You know I love a chair pose. We couldn't make it throughout class without one. Then shifting your weight to your right foot, coming up onto the ball of your left toes. Then lifting the leg up and across. Maybe the toes hook. Maybe the kickstand today. And then arms, left arm comes under right. You grab for shoulders or you wrap at the hand for your eagle pose on the second side. Very good. All right, so stable today, you guys. And we'll unwind, set that foot down, give that right foot a little bit of love before we stand right back on it. Then your right hand can come to your hip, shifting your weight to that right foot. Left hand reaches straight out to the side, kind of like you might be holding a tray. Knee bends, foot comes toward the glute. Hand reaches on the inside of the foot or ankle. And then come back stable. Maybe this is enough for the front side of the body. Maybe you start to kick the foot into the hand more. And maybe you hinge into the answer a bit. Maybe the arm reaches forward. Beautiful. For four, three, two, and one, Oop, shake it out, step it out. Maybe finding that arm sway where they rebound. Oh, it's one of my favorites. And when you're ready, we'll find mountain. Inhale, arms reach high. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hand, steps it back, high plank. Feeling free to lower to the forearms or drop to the knees as we hover and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Lowering belly to the ground and pausing. Hands can make a pillow for the forehead in sleeping crocodile. And hands come forward, elbows under the shoulders, forearms pressing down, sphinx pose. Belly has still got some engagement so that you're not dropping into the low back, but it's a little bit lifted. Feeling strength across the collarbones and equal weight theoretically in each forearm and hand. I tend to lean to one side over the other though. And feeling free to stay here or press into the hands, keeping the elbows soft for King Cobra. Exhale, release it slowly. Elbows go wide, forehead or cheek to the hand. Knees bend, windshield wiper the feet from side to side. And legs come to stillness. This time hands come forward of the mat, but out to the corners. And you tint up your fingers and press up. You can pull them in a slight bit for seal pose. Feeling strength through the, through the middle and upper back, shoulders pressing down, core still engaged, protecting the low back. Exhale, release. Hands can come to that pillow. Feel free to lay in stillness or windshield wide for the feet from side to side. And when you're ready, nothing fancy here, but flip the pancake, finding your way from your belly to your back. And as you arrive there, we'll hug our knees to our chest. Maybe you gently rock from side to side, soothing and massaging through the back. Then feet plant on the mat, heels close in, hands reach toward those heels, shoulders walk underneath you. Hips press high, bridge pose. Feeling engagement through the back side of the body as you feel open and release across the front side. Covering and holding here for five, four, three, And one, slowly articulating the spine to the mat, pausing in neutral. Then walking the feet to the edges of your mat and letting the knees sway from side to side.
after you've swayed for about four rounds. We'll let the knees drop and stay to the left side. Stretching through maybe the hip flexor and quad of the uh, opposite leg. If this doesn't feel like a lot of um, stretch for you, you could figure four your left ankle across your right quad, adding some resistance. You could also press your right hip forward. It will come off the mat and that's totally fine. Full expression here, you could also reach your right hand by your head. If you took the figure four, remove the foot, let the arm come down, and then let the knees come up and over, dropping to your second side. For me, that's my right side. So here, the next level of intensity would be right ankle across the knee, or quad, sorry. The next step might be pressing the hips forward and or reaching the hand overhead. Gently releasing, coming back through center, hugging the knees to the chest. As you gently sway once more, soothing the body. And then, giving your body any last posture it may need. Perhaps you need a spinal twist of dropping the knees to one side and then the other. Maybe a happy baby is in order. Just giving your body any final bit of something it needs. Maybe you just take a very restorative inversion. Feet and hands can just reach to the ceiling. as you prepare your body to settle in to your Shavasana. Now, I know that you're at home and it is easy to get distracted from your stillness. Whether it's, all right, I did the class mostly and so now I'm done. I'm guilty of that in my home practice. And that's okay. Sometimes it's what your body needs. But give yourself the time and space on your mat to pause in stillness, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe you're laying on your back, feet and hands sprawl. Envisioning that press pressure, that shoulder press, and that gentle knee, helping the shoulders drop to the mats. Sure miss that assist. As you surrender to the support of your space and your mat. You could plant your feet and let your knees knock in to reduce tension in the low back. You can let the bottoms of the feet come together and knees open. Finding for fine goddess. Every so often, my body really needs a shavasana on my belly. So feel free to make variations on your shavasana because it's truly about a place 
of surrender and release for your body. As you settle, perhaps your mind returns to the intention that you set at the beginning of class. Maybe you feel that sense of openness across the whole front side of the body. Focusing, focusing that openness over the heart. Feeling a sense of lightness there. your mind drifts, simply call it back with the gentle rhythm of your natural breath pattern. Slowly deepening the breath, filling through the front side of the body. You sighing it out with the exhale as you begin to invite conscious movement back in. Maybe those movements are small, like the fingers and toes. Perhaps they grow, rolling at the wrists, ankles, maybe even nodding the head gently from side to side as you invite life back in on your terms. And as you're ready, 
taking a full body stretch, fingers away from toes, and then hug the knees in. And feeling free to gently rock yourself up to a seat or to drop to your favorite side and then press through your top hand, eventually guiding yourself to a comfortable seat. Arriving where we began. Pausing. You notice your practice settling into the body. Inhale, arms reach high, palms meeting at the top. Exhale, hands pause at your third eye as you seek openness of mind. They rest at your lips so that you find honest words and they settle at your heart as you arrive at a happy heart. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide for your practice. Namaste. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good rest of your evening. You too. And it's good to see you, too. I didn't get to tell you that when you first logged in. Oh, good to see you. I love your birds out there. I can hear them. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really nice, uh, like, ambiance for class. I like it. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye.